But I, I want to show you why Jesus did not spare John. It was because of the kind of ministry. Verse 19, then we'll go back and pick the details that I want us to see. Verse 19, are you there? In 19. <clears throat> this is what Jesus was preparing him for, for which he could not compromise. He said, write the things, of, well, it will interest you to know that it's a book. Jesus wants him to write, which is the book of Revelation that you read today. But the book of Revelation is three-dimensional. And except you see him from the perspective of Alpha Omega, you can't capture this kind of three-dimensional work. I listen to a lot of preachers preach. And I say, you can get this through research. This is not a gospel. You can, do, you can go on the internet and come up with some intelligent stuff like that. And that's good. But if you are ministering from your head, you'll be ministering to people's head. Uh, that sister that came up here a few moments ago, she was ministering from her heart. There was something finding expression from her heart. Everything she did was to give perspective, ventilation to that which had already taken hold on the heart. And that's why he found your heart. Even those that came into this place so pious, sanctimonious, sacramental, were implicated by what was burning on her heart because she was, she was giving it expression. And as long as it came from the heart, it found a way into your own heart. So if what you have is a, a thoroughly researched material, you will just, you will just um, feed the mind. It will be an intellectual session. But if we are talking about running on the tracks of revelation, you will need to meet one that is older than time. So this is what he was pre preparing John for. He said, write the things which thou hast seen. And at this time, what he has seen was the state of the churches. The things which thou hast seen. Okay, what has he seen at this time? Oh, he has seen the revelation of Jesus. The things which are, which is the state of the churches. And the things which shall be... Hereafter, this is a three-dimensional book. It reaches into the past, it gives perspective to the present, and it gives perspective to the future to come. He had to meet one that was dateless, a personality that was timeless, beyond time, to be able to have the capacity to be a testimony. Are you still with me? That was why Jesus was uncompromising. Even though he was not understanding, he felt like a dead man. Jesus had to revive him. There's, there's no other way we can do this. I am the Alpha and the Omega. If you are going to write for me, you will need to know the past. And you are not an ancient. You will need the voice of an ancient to guide you. I am Omega. If you need to write about the future, you must be a spirit. You must be operating in a, term, in a realm where time has no authority. Are you still with me? That was why Jesus did not spare John. I'd like us to go back to the encounters John had. And maybe you'll find yours there. I, I think on. I need to explain to us this Alpha Omega idea. Um, Benny Hinn is one of the ministers that God used mightily to shape my life, shape my faith, shape my work with God. I followed him like a very, very critical student of his. So much so that I, many years ago, I used to wear white suits. Right? <laughs> Benny Hinn. And it will interest you to know that those days are back because God said, pick up those white suits again, pick them up. So when I was in Zimbabwe, I, I tried one out. Tried one out, and it was it was explosive in Zimbabwe. <laughs> Amen. Some of you saw it. Yes. It was explosive in Zimbabwe. So the days of the white suit are back. Okay. <laughs> so one of these days we will uh, you will see me in one in London. <laughs> yes. So I I I was influenced by his ministry so much. And one of those days, he used to do this program. I don't know if he still does it. This is your day on TBN. 
So one of those days, they didn't have the opportunity to be in the studio. <coughs> and it would interest you to know that uh, he, uh, the This Is Your Day program is aired two weeks of post-production after the studio time. Unfortunately, <coughs> he wasn't around for studio time one of those days. So the production manager now asked, okay, what do we do with the time? So okay, uh, play an old tape. And the old tape that the manager picked was surprisingly not the kind of tape that he was supposed to pick because it was not professional for him to pick that tape. The reason was because he gave a specific word of knowledge in the tape about a woman put it on yellow, she was sitting on the couch, her name was Phoebe, she had cancer, and the Lord was healing her. That was too specific to be a tape you just want to use for replacement. But 15 minutes after the airing of this old tape, then a lady called Phoebe now calls him. That I'm the woman you spoke about, and uh, I have been diagnosed of cancer, I was put on yellow. And I was just in the description of what you said. And when you spoke about the healing, then the healing was not on seat. Do you understand what I'm talking about? When you spoke about the healing, I felt a burning sensation. And the cancer burns, the cancer pains, they all disappear. So I'm calling in to testify. And then the production manager knew it was an old tape. So my question to you is, was that an old tape? The man that was walking behind the tape was not, it was a man that was not in time. He doesn't recognize old or new. That's what I mean by Alpha Omega. It's not time-based. Oh my God. And many of you, most, uh, most of you in this place, they, my message that you heard that inspired you was an old tape. But what happened to you was not old. No. Good. So we have seen many people. I was in Uganda and um, God broke out like a plague. And when I left Uganda, uh, some radio stations picked the messages, put it on, on their station and began to broadcast it on their frequency. Do you know that we were still getting testimonies from the radio message, healings? from the radio message. Then I was no longer in Uganda. I had gone home. And I was probably not praying. I was sleeping. <laughs> but there was something on the tape that was not time-based. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Good. Now you are, you are coming. So since I got your attention, don't take it away anymore. Do you realize that the Bible says that a day with God is like a thousand years? What's the meaning of that? It means that the shelf life of a moment you secure with God, that moment can run for a thousand years. That moment that you secure. Oh my God, you are not with me. Do you still remember Apostle Paul in the book of Acts chapter 26? He, 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 he secured the moment. He had an encounter with Jesus on the way to Damascus. And he testified about his encounter with Jesus. He said, he said I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. It means that moment of encounter was still alive and it regulated his activity until the day he died. That moment had a shelf life to live on because it was a whisper that came from the Alpha Omega. I came to, to tell you something. Many of you have had moments like that where the Alpha Omega showed up but that moment is no longer alive with you. It died. It didn't fulfill his shelf life. It was drained out. Because circumstances and tribulations, they showed up and you believed the tribulation much more than you believed the moment. So you lost the moment. And that embryo that God was hoping that you would keep, you would tend, it died in your vessel. I will never forget age of 13. I was taken to heaven. I was there for eight hours. I saw strange things that God has not yet given me liberty to share. Probably, oh my God, the angels that fought to ensure that I didn't die at 14, I saw them. There were four of them. 
And there's one of them with a slim face that normally comes with a scroll to read out the future. Never forget that. Are you still with me? A stammerer, I couldn't speak. So when, when the angel with the slim face was reading the scroll, I interrupted him. Stop there. Why do you call me a preacher? The God wasn't God aware that I was going to preach before he decided to make me like this. And then the angel stopped reading the scroll. If that was the greatest mistake I made in my life. I would have allowed him to finish reading before I bring my quiz. He rolled the scroll and he shouted, ah! You know what the shout was? That's what you call thunder. He blasted. It was the energy that came from that thunder that transported me from where I was in heaven into my body on earth. I've seen strange things. But that moment still lives still today. For every encounter you have with the Alpha and Omega, the chef life can stretch for a thousand years. Your sons and your sons' sons can inherit that moment. And it shapes their lives. It shapes their pilgrimage. Will that, will this moment, will it die? That's my question to you. Will this moment die? The angel read that I was supposed to be a preacher of the gospel to turn the hearts of many that were already en route the flames of hell. Years later, when I got to 21, he came back. The angel came back. It was around that time from 21 to 24, based on the encounters that I had, that my tongue was loosed. Yeah. Those moments are still alive. Then I realized that if I wanted the tongue to be loose so that I can preach the gospel, because you don't think I'm a stammerer, but the symptoms are still there. But I had to pray for long to get this voice. I found the key. That if I stay with God and stay in his presence for a long time, the yoke will be lifted from my shoulders and the burden will be taken from my neck. And I will be able to speak. I don't speak with natural power. That moment leaves. I remember I was in uh, somewhere in northern Nigeria and uh, a sister sang just like you sang today. May God bless you forever. Amen. And when I closed my eyes and I tried to open the eyes, I couldn't see the roof anymore. I was not where I was. And a big angel from heaven just descended. And when I looked upon him, it was as if I went blind. But in my blindness, I was transported. And Jesus appeared to me and said to me with bass voice, take my presence and my power to the peoples of the world. And it echoed in my spirit. Take my presence and my power to the peoples of the world. That's what Jesus said. When I recovered myself in the meeting, I was on the floor. And I don't know how I got there. But that moment lives. Just even tonight, you will see the power of his presence. Can you tend the little strand of grace that God will put upon your heart? Can you find the fires of that grace to flame and bear the body to keep it burning as you transit from of the pressure, irrespective of the persecution? Can you keep it alive? Satan will fight to see that that moment dies. Oh my. Yakobe si kobriva. Si bobalento ski so seka mind. He will fight. He will fight for you to give up that moment. He will fight for you to give up that encounter. He will create aberrations. And the moment you believe in the lie. You lose the mercy that he places upon your life. For the Bible says that there 
that observe lying vanities, they forsake their mercy. For many years when I was in the university, my mom didn't believe I, I was in school. Because her friend came and told her that she saw me preaching in a strange place. And your son is not going to school. So my mom didn't believe I was going to school. So when I came to ask for school fees, she gave me the school fees, but she didn't believe I was going to school. When I finished, I brought the certificate and showed her, I'm a graduate. She didn't believe. She thought I forged it. Mm. It was when I finished my youth service because in Nigeria, I it. so I brought the certificate to her. And she now asked me, so you went to school? And one day, so I saw how they were not interested in me being a preacher, so I became an undercover preacher. So when I see people sick at home, such sickness that I have authority to cast out, I say, have you tried this drug? Because I had to be undercover. And it came to pass one of those days, she was invited to a meeting. I didn't know she was there. I was preaching and the presence. Two days after that meeting, she did not speak. She was wondering. And when she spoke eventually, she asked me, my son, what happened to you? <laughs> she never heard me speak like that. Everybody except her fell off. Began to speak in tongues. That was when she discovered that speaking in tongues was real. Because nobody touched anybody. They just started speaking. And because of her own belief, she couldn't really see. But she knew after that service that it was real. What happened to you? It was a moment, a moment with the Alpha Omega. A moment. A moment that I labored to keep alive. A moment. Have you lost your moment? When he showed up with his glory. Deficiencies, your insufficiencies, and he showed up and he looked upon you with the flaming eyes. Oh. It was his intention for that moment to last for eternity. You must call that moment back this evening. You must call it back this evening. The economic situation in the United Kingdom cannot be the reason for which you lost that moment. That is the hope. That moment carried the hope of God extending the frontiers of his influence through your life and affecting someone else, affecting your husband, affecting people around you. That moment is an investment from the Alpha Omega.